If you are going to the grocery store several times a week and having to think on the fly of what to make for dinner, there is such a better way. We're gonna save you a ton of time. We're gonna save you some money too, but most of all, we're gonna save you that mental space. So stick with us today and we're gonna show you how easy this can be and the recipes we're using today are kid approved. of things are, that are important when it comes to freezer meals. Kid approved is one of them, but you also want easy to put together. You want something that is totally doable for everybody in your family or for yourself. And here's the nice thing about freezer meals. You can do that because they're so customizable. We've purposely chosen seven recipes today with the intention that hopefully you keeners out there would double each of these recipes so that you'll end up with two weeks worth of meals and not have to think about what to make for dinner for half a month. That sounds really great. That's how we live and it feels really, really good. So after we do this first recipe, I'm gonna tell you a bit of a story as to why we're choosing to do these meals with you today. This first recipe is going to take you three minutes, yes, you heard that right, three minutes to put together. It is called That Lady's Chicken and it is an absolute favorite in our house. Our kids love it so much that we often have to make two of these for just one dinner. I do have a large family though, so if you have sort of a regular size family, you could probably get away with one bag. I have a regular size family, there's four of us, and we can get away with one bag. If we had company, I would pull out two because again, that is kind of the magic of freezer meals. So into a large resealable freezer bag, you're going to add some boneless skinless chicken breasts or boneless skinless chicken thighs. A bottle of Russian dressing. If you can't find Russian dressing, you can use Catalina as a substitute. Then some apricot jam, three tablespoons of dry onion soup mix, or you can use a packet of dry onion soup mix. We buy ours in bulk, so we use it by the tablespoon. That's it. You're gonna squish all these things together in the bag to combine it because then you're not dirtying a bowl and you have less dishes to do. You're going to get out all the air that you can out of the bag because when you're freezer cooking, air causes freezer burn and you're gonna seal it, get it into your freezer. On the day you go to make this, it is just as simple as it was to assemble it because you're just gonna pull it out, thaw it, and then throw it into your oven or slow cooker. You can serve this on rice or mashed potatoes with a side salad or vegetable, and the sauce is it's a little bit like candy. <laughs> I, this is one I definitely always have with rice because of the sauce. Because then you can, after you're done with your chicken, but you still have that, mm, I need to eat some more, you can just go get a bowl of rice and put the extra sauce on it. And it's kind of like having Chinese food. Like it is just perfect to have it that way. <laughs> so the reason that we are choosing to do kid-friendly freezer meals with you today and try to show you that there's a better way than going to the grocery store every second or third day is because last night I went over to a friend's house. We were gonna make some appetizers together and watch a movie or visit. Just kinda hang out because I hadn't seen her in a long time. She and I have been friends since we were nine years old. Can you imagine? Like, yeah. it's awesome to have friendships that are that long lasting. So I was really looking forward to catching up with her but she ended up having to push it back by an hour because she called me when she was on her way home from work and she's like, I just have to swing by the store so that I can get something to feed my kids. Now, if I had been thinking, I would have just been like, ah, I'll just pull something out of my freezer and bring it to you. But I assumed because I've lived this freezer meal lifestyle for so many years, I don't even think that way anymore. So I thought she meant like milk and bread or you know, cereal and apples. Like, <laughs> I was just thinking, she's gotta pick up a few things from the grocery store. But when she finally got to me like an hour later, after having braved Costco during rush hour Costco. Oh. Yeah. That brave lady. That very brave lady, right? Uh, 
because everybody is on their way home from work and needing to stop and pick up something for dinner. Then, you know, we get to her place and she pulls out this Costco dinner, it's sort of pre-made because by then it's like her kids are already hungry. And so you still have to cook it, but it was this shrimp penne Alfredo thing. And so it cooked up in half an hour, but she still, you know, you gotta have a half an hour to cook it. And it was $23.97. <gasps> right. Well, the shrimp, but still. It was not enough shrimp. Okay, they we're in Canada, so it's gonna be more expensive at our Costco than it's going to be, you know, throughout the United States for sure. But yikes. And so I did a little bit of math just <laughs> as I'm watching her eat this up. I, you know, I can't help it. My freezer meal brain is going, okay, so that much shrimp would cost me this much. And even if I used jarred Alfredo, it would be this much. And so I could have made that meal for less than $10. <laughs> and I wouldn't have had to stop at Costco. I would have already had it in my freezer. So I'm saving the gas and the time as well because I'm not going to the grocery store several times a week. I'm, I was just visiting with her and I, you know, she knows I do freezer meals, but she, it's not something she's done. And so as I'm talking to her, I'm like, how often do you do, do that? this? <laughs> like have to stop on your way home from work to pick something up to feed your kids. And she's like, every second or third day. <laughs> and then she said, that she struggles as she's in the store because she doesn't have a plan going in. Right, she just about, needs food. Yeah, so she had also picked up a rotisserie chicken with no idea what she was gonna do with it. Right. But just to have so that maybe the next day her kids could eat that. So I'm thinking, whoa. Like again, we're so used to having things. Right. That we don't have to worry about it, but then it really hit me how much time we're actually saving. Because it's not just that we're not making the meals every day, we're not going to the store every second or third day, and we're not having to think about, oh my goodness, what do I make? Right, and, and being behind the ball that way. Like, I, I worked full time, I worked in an office, I was, you know, in a similar position as her, but because I was doing freezer meals, I could come home and here's the other thing, I had taken it out in the morning and left it, or the night before, and left it to thaw and I really could just into the oven. I didn't even have to think about, oh, what do I have to make? Now, there are times where I think about what I have in my freezer and I think, oh, my kids would really like chicken fingers. And I'll buy the chicken fingers and that's totally fine, but it's not usually in a panic or <laughs> under duress. Right. Oh. And so I told Christy that we have to do this video today because I'm just thinking of all the moms and dads out there who are like, what do I feed my kids? And, and spending way more than they need to spend. Mm -hmm. And then time-wise too, oh my goodness. And then braving the crowds in that I, after work right. rush uh. hour. And so this video is for you. If you can relate to my other friend's story of, you know, go wandering through the aisles, like what am I gonna feed them? And now I have another idea. We should do a Costco look-alike video where we make shrimp Alfredo with penne or whatever it was. Do you know what Costco has here? I don't know if every Costco has it, but they have those salmon steaks that have that seafood medley, medley in the middle. Mm -hmm. And I have, dreamed of how to make that. I don't even know how to Google it to look for how to make it from home because it's pricey. It's like $25 for those salmons. Like it didn't used to be, it has gotten to be. And it was always something I would buy like if it just to be special because right. it was something that I didn't really feel confident that I could make, but. Oh, we could totally make that. We, but there's mayo in it. So I've just been thinking about like, can we freeze it? Is there a way to do it? Cause there's shrimp and crab in that medley. Like. Yeah. There's got to be a way. Then you think about all the things that Costco has that you can just pick up and go. Well, and they have the fajita kits. They or, have fajita and, kits. And I mean, we do fajita kits <laughs> in our freezer. Already. So, and again, just a fraction mm -hmm. of the cost. I think that's a great idea. They have shepherd's pie. They have lasagna. We'll do that. See, coming up with ideas all over the place here. But in the meantime, we're going to keep sharing these kid-friendly recipes mm -hmm. with you so that you can not brave the like dinner rush at the grocery store. I feel so badly for you. There's a better way. There is a better way. Our next recipe is an oldie but a goodie for us. It's pizza casserole. 
um, and your kids will love it. Anything that has pizza in the name is automatically going to be a winner in your household and here's how you make it. In a large resealable bag you're going to add some cubed ham, shredded parmesan cheese, some mozzarella cheese, a chopped onion, a green pepper, some tomato sauce, Italian seasoning, and some red pepper flakes. You mix that all around, remove that excess air because air is the enemy. That is where your freezer burn comes from and we want to eliminate that as best we can. And you're gonna seal it up. In a second bag, you are going to add two cups of, like we like to use the small pasta shells, but any type of small pasta will be fine. That's in a quart size bag. Again, get the air out, seal it up, and then you're gonna staple these two bags together above the seal so that you're not looking for pasta on the day that you go to make this. When you go to make this, you can cook it up in the slow cooker, you can do it on the stove top, you can do it in the oven. You will want to cook your pasta and then add it in right at the very end and then have it like that. Or if you wanna make this a one pot meal, you can add in a cup of water when you put it on to heat it up and then you can add your pasta in about 20 minutes before you go to eat it and it becomes a one pot meal because that pasta cooks up right in the sauce making it extra easy. We have been making this one for so, so long, but it's one of the ones where if I make it in one of our mega sessions, then it sits in the freezer for a while because I don't like to cook the pasta and drain it. Like that extra step, I know, I sound like so privileged because I don't wanna cook the pasta, but it's true, these meals are so easy that I get used to that. When we discovered we could make it as a one pot, then I started pulling it out right away and like making that, so. That is really funny. <laughs> I'm glad that you discovered that. Because yeah. it does make it extra easy. It makes it, and then, you know, you save the dishes too, because you don't have the strainer and the extra pot. So <laughs> I appreciate that She's as thinking well. way ahead. She is thinking in 2032. <laughs> so uh, for those of you that don't know, Christy and I are neighbors and we've been making freezer meals separately for like, I'm, I'm going on almost 20 years now, but we've been making them together for 12. And once every three months we get together and do what we call a mega session, which is enough meals to last both of our families for the next three months. And that's why, like we were saying, we don't have to think about what's for dinner every day. So I'm gonna pop a video right there and I'll also put it in the description box down below of one of our mega sessions where we made 129 freezer meals. Because not only are we crazy enough to make 129 freezer meals, we film it. <laughs> Cause we don't have enough to do. That's right. <laughs> because we're making freezer meals, we have time for that. <laughs> that that's, a, that's a good point. <laughs> like Christy was saying, if you call anything pizza, your kids will eat it. Like, it's, it's magic. <laughs> I remember, like, I was in junior high and we went to a friend's house and her mom made just the pizza buns, but like they were open-faced with a bit of salt pizza sauce, um, a slice of salami and some mozzarella cheese and we had pizza buns and I couldn't get enough of them. Like it just didn't matter that it wasn't really pizza. Right. You make them on pitas. Yes. We've made them on flatbread. It can be anything. <laughs> anything. So pizza sliders is brilliant, really. This next recipe is the pizza sliders and it is actually adult approved as well, I have to say. Oh yeah, oh yeah, it's good. <laughs> and super simple. And if you're ever wanting to feed a larger group of kids, like a birthday party, we actually served these at my daughter's baby shower um, or a youth group event. These would be perfect for camping. This is just like such a good recipe. So all you're gonna do is you're gonna buy a dozen buns that are all attached together. And then you're going to slice it open lengthwise, take the top off. You're gonna put the bottom row of those buns into a foil baking dish. Then you're going to sprinkle some shredded mozzarella on top of that and then spread some pizza sauce over the mozzarella. The reason you do the cheese first is so that the buns get less soggy from the pizza sauce. You're going to put some sliced pepperoni on top of the pizza sauce, sprinkle some more mozzarella cheese on top of that. Then you're gonna replace the lid, that top set of the buns, and you're gonna brush some melted butter on top of the buns sprinkle some Parmesan cheese on top of that, and some Italian seasoning. Then you're gonna cover this with aluminum foil and get that into your freezer. On the day you go to cook this, all you do is 
thaw it and bake this in the oven for 25 minutes. That means in less than half an hour, you will be eating dinner. This is one that you can, in a pinch, cook it if it's still frozen, but you'll need a lot longer cook time, like about an hour and a half. So it really is good to have it thawed first and then throw it in there, but I have had to do the from frozen. <laughs> I've had to do it too, and, and you, you, know, you say in a pinch, but really it's the opposite. Like it, it does take a long time. Bread is dense, right? <laughs> And, yes. <laughs> and and it is it is all dense in there. It does take a long time, but still so good to have. So easy. Mhm. Mm and it's got pizza in it, so the kids will eat it. <laughs> and something else to mention, I don't know, you didn't say it, but if if your salami or your pepperoni covers over, you're going to have to recut it, right? Because like we make hand sliders, we have Monte Cristo sliders. We always make sure we go back and cut those so that you can take out one at a time. Mm -hmm. um, with pizza sliders, it's pretty easy that they'll come away all right. But in case, you know, if you bought the giant pepperoni slices, yeah, then, you have to then you're going to want to cut it because um, we certainly want to want to make a mess when we are feeding our children pizza things. This next recipe was um, a bit of a shock when I first saw it, to be honest, because Sharla had been making this for her kids for like a long time and I had never seen it. I had never really heard of it. Really, it's quite cute. And so when we made it and we tried it for the first time, I'm like, this is a total winner, of course. Of course. And because, okay, listen, we use frozen pie dough. If you wanna make your own pie dough, you go ahead and do that. We just buy the frozen shells because they come in a two pack and this makes two. So go ahead and do that or make your own. We are not going to judge you either way because you know, it, you can give yourself a break sometimes. So we're gonna start out with our two frozen pie shells. We're going to prick the bottoms and put them in the oven at 400 for like literally just five minutes and get them back out in a medium bowl. We are going to mix together raw ground beef, some slightly beaten eggs, onion, milk, breadcrumbs, a squeeze of mustard, and then we will add in our seasonings. We have parsley flakes, some Worcestershire sauce, and that's it. We are going to mix that right around and then divide it between the two pie shells. We're gonna pat that down nicely, top each of the pie shells with some tomato sauce and some shredded cheddar cheese. We're going to sprinkle a bit of paprika on top of that cheese and then wrap each of these pies up with plastic wrap and then each of these pies with foil. Get these into your freezer, on the day of cooking, you wanna make sure that they are thawed. Take off your foil and your plastic wrap, throw them in the oven at 350 for 45 to 55 minutes until your center is fully cooked, so kind of like a meatloaf, and then let it set, and you can cut this up and eat it just like pie. And I'll tell you, this makes even the best leftovers the next day. The pie crust is still crusty, it doesn't get soggy, and there's like wild flavor in this. I was super impressed when I made this. My kids think it's super fun because like it's pie and it's cheeseburger. It's so kid friendly. We like to serve it with fries because then it's like you're having like a cheeseburger and fries. Oh, that's so cute. If you want to be healthier, you can serve it with a side salad. Or sweet potato fries in your air fryer. Totally. <laughs> you totally can. There's ways to make it healthier. Get those vegetables into your kids or have the salad. Good luck. <laughs> kids like pie. We're gonna do something else with pie because it's just fun and it works. And if you can get your kids to eat things because they're shaped in fun ways, do it. Like we have a lot of muffin tin things. We've got muffin tin meatloaves and, you know, because then again, your kids are like excited to eat meatloaf because it's little and cute. <laughs> you used to do muffin tins a lot when the kids were little and she homeschooled and so she, that's how she would get them to try different things because you know you would have edamame beans but there would just be a few of them because it's just in the muffin tin and so they don't have to eat like spoonfuls they no. just have to try it right each of my kids would get one of those six six tin muffin tins at lunch and then I would have something different in each of the compartments that way everybody could try things but there was always something fun like maybe I would take cucumber and shape it like a flower or shape sh some cheese like a star or you know whatever <laughs> again just tricking my kids into eating healthier or I would do the frozen grapes and you know just things that are a little bit more fun but I would always have something like the edamame beans or we did fava beans and lima beans once because there's a book called A Bad Case of Stripes and it's about lima beans. And so I read them the book <laughs> and then 
did the lima beans. For your spaghetti pie, you're going to cook and drain some spaghetti noodles. Now, you might want to undercook these by about just a minute or two so that when you're cooking this up later, they don't get mushy. Then you're going to mix those noodles with a little bit of butter, some Parmesan cheese, and a beaten egg. And you're going to press this noodle mixture down into a pie plate and create a spaghetti crust. <laughs> Doesn't that sound fun? Then you're going to take some browned ground beef that is cooled, some chopped onion, minced garlic, tomato sauce, oregano, basil, parsley, salt and pepper, and mix that together in a bowl. You're going to spoon that onto your spaghetti crust, and then you're gonna top this with some grated mozzarella cheese. Now you're going to cover it with some plastic wrap and then some aluminum foil. You wanna write on your aluminum foil to be sure to remove that plastic wrap because you don't wanna accidentally cook your plastic wrap later. You're gonna get this into the freezer. On the day of cooking, you're gonna remove your plastic wrap and foil. Bake this at 350 for 15 minutes. It's done so, so fast. And then you're gonna cut it into wedges, just like pie, and serve it. That is get... <laughs> really, really cute. The other thing that is good to mention, when you are buying the small pie crusts and the small tins, they actually fit really nicely inside a gallon freezer bag. That is true. Because we've done it with quiches, we've done it, you can like do freezer quiche, just so you know. You can cook it ahead of time or cook it after. A little trickier if you cook it after, but it can be done. But they fit nicely inside that um, freezer bag. That's a good point because I do that with my torchere, like my meat pie. Yes, totally. I've been reading the Food Lab. If you have not ever heard of the Food Lab, it is a thick book about like this and it's everything you wanted to know about cooking scientifically. Is there a scientific way to boil your water? Right now I'm on eggs. I am loving this because they're talking about how to do the eggs so many different ways. I'm learning so much. And like I thought I knew stuff about eggs. My parents were egg farmers at one time in their life. I do know a lot about eggs. And a lot of it he's confirmed, but a lot of it is like, oh. He used the term, air is the enemy. Ooh. I'm listening to it. It's free on Audible. If you have an Audible account, you can listen to the Food Lab for free. And he said, the air is the enemy. And I'm like, <laughs> it had nothing to do with eggs. I think he was talking about spices or something. Spices can be kept really only for a couple of months. I don't really recommend that you keep them for a year, which I'm like, have you seen how old my marjoram is that I use once every five years? You can freeze spices and that helps keep their freshness as well as like yeast and stuff. I, I freeze all my yeast and all my nuts. I freeze all of that because it, you can keep it indefinitely. He used the word indefinitely. Whoa. Like that is a very concrete thing to say. That is very black and white to say indefinitely. I'm, I'm liking the food lab. You should check it out. And air is the enemy. This next recipe is chicken noodle soup casserole. We do bring it out every once in a while and it's really delicious. It was just such a surprising hit to me because it really it's simple. It's simple and it really tastes like chicken noodle soup. It does and it's five ingredients. So it's kid friendly, but it's also pretty budget friendly. It's all of these things. So part of our prep for this recipe is you're going to cook your chicken up and then cube it and you're going to cook your egg noodles, kind of like the spaghetti pie. You're going to undercook it a little bit so that they are going to be able to be cooked again later and not get mushy on you. Just a little asterisk here, don't do this with gluten-free noodles. You will regret it. Do gluten-free noodles um, fresh on the day of. You can't freeze it and expect to have a good outcome. Um, we've learned that the sticky way. <laughs> <laughs> and that's all I'm gonna say about that. So on the day that you're ready to assemble this, in a large bowl, you're going to mix together your chicken breasts, frozen peas, frozen corn, and some cream of mushroom soup. You're going to also mix in the noodles. You wanna get all that extra air out because as we have said, clearly air is the enemy and seal it up and freeze it. On the day of cooking, you wanna thaw it. You wanna transfer this to a greased casserole dish, like a nine by 13 pan is fine and bake it at 325 for 20 to 30 minutes. It's so fast, you wanna make sure it's uncovered. And then it's just like eating chicken noodle soup in a casserole. And it is actually really 
fun. It's really tasty. I, like you, was surprised at this five ingredient recipe and how tasty it actually is. Now, if your kids are not going to eat the peas and the corn, figure out what they will eat. You, can, you, you could do this with cubed carrots that have been mm -hmm. pre-cooked, like leftover carrots. This would be a nice leftover dish, to be honest. Throw everything but the kitchen sink in there. You really could, because you're gonna kind of do that with chicken noodle soup sometimes too. Mm -hmm. It's pretty versatile, but the flavor in this is great. While none of the recipes today have really hit the mark for like the healthiest in the whole world, and we do have a lot of healthy recipes, and today we're, you know, diverging from that a little bit. It's hard to say healthy and kid-friendly in the same sentence and keep a straight face because yeah. yeah. But this next one is decidedly the least healthy of the bunch. And this is our tater tot casserole. But I couldn't do a kid-friendly freezer meals video without mentioning my kids' favorite recipe. This very <laughs> unhealthy but tasty <laughs> tater tot casserole. So what you're gonna do for this is you're going to take some browned and cooled Italian sausage. You can use mild or spicy, and you're gonna put that into a quart size freezer bag. And again, get the air out and seal that. Set that aside, and then you are going to mix together some mushroom soup, evaporated milk, a little bit of paprika, salt and pepper in a bowl, in a large resealable freezer bag, you're going to add some tater tots and pour that soup mixture over top. You're going to get as much air out as you can of that bag and seal it. And then you're gonna staple the two bags together above the seal and freeze them. On the day you go to make this, you thaw it and you're gonna put that ground sausage in the bottom of your casserole dish and then you're going to dump the tater tot mixture on top of that. Bake this uncovered because you want those tater tots to crisp up for an hour in a 350 degree oven. You might want to serve this one with some veggies or a side salad just so that you feel a little bit better about the food you're feeding your kids. But really, this is at least going to get them fed. On days that I have something like this where, you know, it's decidedly not as healthy as it could be. My favorite way to get extra vegetables into them is just chopped raw vegetables with dip. Oh, that's a good point. It really is, like do carrot sticks and some celery sticks, some chopped up cucumber. I found out like in the last month or so that my daughter doesn't like peppers and never has. Oh. And I don't, I've been feeding them to her and she's like, I eat them because you, you present them, like you make them, but I, they're just really not my favorite. And I'm like, that's allowed. <laughs> I have things that I'm not a fan of. Um, but I was surprised. I don't, I don't know how I missed that. Isn't that funny? Because she ate it. It was nice of her to eat them all this time. <laughs> and I always have to make sure I do carrots because that is one that my son will actually eat. They seem to be everywhere now, the mini cucumbers. Yes. They're so tasty. Mm -hmm. I really like them with a the dill dip. This is actually a perfect one to serve with raw veggies and dip. Yeah, or I do it with like with chicken fingers or wieners and beans. Like, do you ever have you ever made wieners and beans for your kids? Way back, maybe, but I think like my husband's made them for the kids. Like they have eaten them, but I don't know that I've. That ever is made like them. probably my kids' favorite comfort food, is wieners and beans, franks and beans, and. And sometimes my mom would do it where everybody gets their own hot dog and then they can dip it into the, to the beans and eat it like that. Because it just makes it a little more fun. But then you, you'd put out some, some vegetables and you're <laughs> dipping everything. They were allowed to double dip. What a fun grandma. Actually, my mom was a really fun grandma. I hope someday I get to be just as fun a grandma. I don't know that I'm going to be that fun a grandma because... <laughs> I don't know how I feel about the whole double dipping thing. Actually, I'd be okay with it if they're doing it and I'm not participating. <laughs> yeah, you could set it out there because then you would go and eat your nachos because you're not eating the hot dogs anyway. No, Let's be I, real here. No, I'm not going to eat a hot dog. <laughs> right. I was one of those people that when, you, when I got pregnant and they say a pregnant woman shouldn't eat more than 12 hot dogs in a month, I'm like, that could actually apply to me. Like, I like them that much. I've never, I don't think I've eaten 12 hot dogs in a month. But I'm like, uh, that is good information for me to know. 
<laughs> and I don't think I've ever eaten one. But I have come across in this video as being like so uptight because I'm the one that's like. Well, you're not super uptight. You just like things a certain way and that's okay. There are things I like a certain way. Right. But, there are. You know, hot they, dogs are good. We just haven't talked about them in this video. Someday we'll pick on me. Okay, we've gone off topic as we tend to do from time to time. We really appreciate you joining us for this video. We hope that you've seen that there is a different way than braving the crowds at your grocery store or Costco on your way home from work. You can have all of these, hopefully doubled, so 14 of these, sitting in your freezer, just ready to pull out and throw in the oven. It makes life so, so, so much easier. That's right, and if you want to see more videos that are mm, healthier and have a little bit more variety, you go ahead and click that subscribe button because stick around and you'll see those for sure. And just to prove it to you, we're going to stick a video right there that has some healthy freezer meals for your family. Thanks for being with us today and happy cooking. Bye!